Hello guys, how are you going? Just another video just covering pretty much the entire bedroom system. Uh, you're on you're on our channel, My Dad Says, where we cover everything, pretty much everything stereo. Uh, Dad, what can you tell us about the system? Well, this is this is my bedroom system. Uh, it's basically vinyl and CD based. I don't really have any other sources other than those two for this system. Um, I guess uh, probably the star of the show would be the Sorens over here, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, it's quite a nice turntable. Um, I'm a bit of a vinyl, vinyl, uh, vinylista, I guess you might call it. Right. Uh, you know, I use CD for convenience more than sound quality. That might upset a lot of people, but uh, I, over my 65 years, that's sort of what I've found pleases me. And you never you never gave up your vinyl f collection no, for CD, did you? You didn't get no, sucked in. No, no, no. It's, uh, I hung on to it. I thought, no, I'll be a weirdo. That's okay. Uh, and uh, it's quite amusing now to watch... Uh, uh, all you young dudes get into it now. Well, it's horrifically expensive, new records, yeah. you know. They're... Yeah, well, no, I didn't get rid of any of my old records. Very good, very mm -hmm. good. And what about the phono stage? Well, I think we've sort of covered the phono stage before. It's, uh, it's uh, a, clone, a Chinese clone. I think actually I got that from Taiwan, interestingly enough. Right. Um, it's it's based on the Marant Seven, so three valve using twelve AX sevens, uh, three valve uh, phono stage, which I I think on the previous video explained that I've completely rebuilt. Uh, gives quite good results with uh, it's moving magnet only. There's no moving coil step on it up on it. And I believe you've you've pretty thoroughly upgraded all the capacitors in it with yeah, black gates. Yeah, but black gates all in on that unit. Um, I've used uh, Nichicon, I think uh, the, the high voltage equivalent of the Muse range in that. Right. I've used all quite nice bits, you know, Holco resistors, etc. For it, um, and as I've shown before. Use an inner tube to, to suspend everything on a paving slab. Good. I find that's actually quite effective for very, very little money. Uh, I, what I've done is float the whole system. If you have a look over here, the, the amp is floating, the preamp is floating, and the CD player is floating. It's interesting, I, to show just how how uh, lacking in enthus super enthusiasm I have for CD, I got this from an op shop for $8. And it's, for what it is, that sounds pretty decent. It's an Akai, I think it's a rebadged or a badge engineered Sony player because I've opened it up like I do with everything up. I've, I've got and had a look and it's all Sony chip chipsets in it so I think it's a fairly safe assumption to say that Akai never ever made CD players per se, per se and it's a Sony machine. This is uh, a Marantz 7 um, clone, just the line stage part of it. Uh, I changed the tubes in it and it's on a slab and it's got my proprietary um, mains cable, which I'm, I'm quite keen about. Uh, and a video will be forthcoming on it. It for, may, maybe, maybe, we for, may, maybe. For, I haven't actually done anything inside it beyond just change the tubes. For all you cable sceptics, yeah. uh, there's, there's, you know, my dad and I are believers in cable. So, you know, we do have a video planned for that. Yeah, it's uh, 
It's quite a nice little system. Uh, I, I particularly like the speakers. They work quite well with uh, single-ended amp here. And uh, they have all the attributes that you'd normally associate with a full range driver of coherence, focus, and imaging uh, is, is pretty impressive actually. Most people that listen to it uh, start nodding. <laughs> yeah, no, I love this system. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm jealous because yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan of full range, yeah. but I've only got four inches, and it's just you don't get quite the heft and base weight that you get with a bigger cone. Yeah, yeah, that's it's not quite an eight inch cone. I'd say it's about it would accurately be described as about a seven inch cone. Yeah. Um, all I can say is it's the sort of system where if you're playing records. You put on one record, go, oh, that sounds really great. And then you get another record out, play that. That sounds really great. And, uh, you know, it encourages you to put more and more music on, I guess you'd say. Well, that's you know, I, get, I get quite wrapped up in the music rather than the hi-fi per se. Would you, would you say that the Thorins might be one of the best turntables you've ever had? Yeah, yeah, well, it's... And you've had a few. I'm, I've had quite a few. I've had quite a few turntables. Yeah, just you know, to... More, more than I can actually remember. Yes. <laughs> uh, and what can you tell us about the record weight? Is that sta is that aluminium or stainless? No, it's a stainless steel record weight. Nice. Yeah. It goes quite well. Yeah. yeah. At, some, at some stage... I may well, the speaker cable that I use on this, I may well do uh, a video on it. If you have a look here, if you have a look here, you can actually see the speaker cable. It's a positive leg, a negative leg, it, and it's solid core. At some point, I'll probably do a video on that. That costs, raw cost, not making it, the labour isn't part of it, the raw cost is about two two dollars a metre for that stuff. Two dollars a metre, that's that's peanuts for high end cable. You you can really spend a lot of well, money on cable. Yeah, true. I've looked and I'm like true. I balk at it like I'm like uh, even if I won the fifty million Powerball, I think I'm I'd get decent cable. I'll probably just get my dad to knock some up. Line his pockets with silver. I don't think at two dollars a meter I'm going to buy <laughs> my pocket with anything. So the, the the Akai is a bit of a secret weapon. I reckon it dates from perhaps late eighties, nineteen ninety, maybe. No, no, no. I don't but, I don't think it even makes it into the nineteen nineties. No. No, because if you if you look at it, it's got a very early uh, compact disc logo on the drawer there. Yeah, they kind of stopped doing that after yeah, a while, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, by the 90s that it all finished. But, uh, yeah. And you, when you listen to CDs through the through the bedroom system with the Akai, you don't think, oh, I'm missing out. It's actually quite a good sound. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it pleases me well. Well, I, since we did the video on the JBH, I've had, the, uh, had some new output tubes. From Shigong to what are the new the ones? Sh Shigong's, the Shigong's, the Shigong's I've kept as spares. Yeah, I was going to say the these, Shigong's are good. Yeah, these are, these are mullard reissues from Softec, and I've got to say uh, they are better than the, the than the Chinese valves, but it's it's not huge. It's not a huge difference, but uh, it's just a little more precise and defined. Right. Um, so you, you've pretty much upgraded every tube in it now, haven't you? Well, it, I have, yes. Mm, yep. Yes. And plenty of their components inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I, I own a little Yulu uh, EL34 tube amp, similar. Well, that's the one I did up. That's the one my dad's done up. We'll have to do a video on that later. Yeah. But it's it's a good sounding amp, and it's, I, I'm a big fan of the EL34. I think it's quite a musical tube. Yeah. 
All right, folks, that's it for today. If you like what you see, please subscribe and like and comment below. Until next time, see ya.